Hello, and welcome to this short video documentary highlighting some of the most unique and fascinating railroads of the region I call home, Southeast Michigan. Over the past few months, I've been working hard to compile footage for this comprehensive video documentary, so if you enjoyed this video and would like to see more footage like this in the future, please consider leaving a like and subscribing to the channel. Now, with the formalities out of the way, sit back, relax, and enjoy the show. We begin trackside on a warm summer's evening just north of Ann Arbor, Michigan, as Great Lakes Central leads a slow, lumbering train down to their southernmost point of trackage, Osmer Yard. Here in Osmer, the train will leave its loaded cars on the siding from the various northern Michigan industries the railroad serves in order for them to be shuttled further south down to Toledo by the Ann Arbor Railroad. Today's train is led by a unique trio of GP35s. Just listen to the roar of these classic diesel locomotives working hard to get their loaded freight train on the move. These engines were originally built for the Ann Arbor Railroad in 1964 by EMD, the locomotive division of General Motors. However, unlike your typical EMD GP35, these locomotives feature parts out of classic Alco-built FA2 diesels. You see, back in the day, the Ann Arbor Railroad wasn't pleased with their aging Alco-only engine fleet and wished to switch to EMD power to improve reliability and ergonomics for their crews. At the time, EMD offered a trade-in program allowing the Ann Arbor to save on costs by supplying their own trucks and traction motors from their old Alcos. engines today, it's hard to miss the classic Alco truck frames that have been in service on their home lines since the 50s. Yes, that's right, these engines have never left their home turf despite currently operating for another railroad. That's because the Great Lakes Central operates the former Ann Arbor Railroad's 450 plus mile mainline north of Ann Arbor, whilst the modern day Ann Arbor, a fraction of what it once was, only operates the 83 mile line between here and Toledo. After dropping off their cut of cars, and with no empties to bring back north, 
the engines will make their long journey home back to Owasso. A few days later, we catch the Ann Arbor Railroad headed north as it crosses over the Huron River in the city of Ann Arbor. Today's train north is a cut of empty cars to be exchanged with the Great Lakes Central in Osmer Yard. There, the train will drop off its empties and pick up loaded cars before heading back south to Toledo. Back track side at Osmer Yard, we find the loaded cars that were dropped off earlier, patiently waiting their journey south on the Ann Arbor Railroad. Today's northbound leader is a former Union Pacific EMD GP40-3 owned by Web Asset Management. WATCO, the current operator of the Ann Arbor Railroad, chooses to lease most of its motive power, including both of these locomotives.
original Ann Arbor Railroad that operated this trackage was founded in 1895 and primarily existed as a means to bypass the congested rail traffic of Chicago. Trains would depart from Toledo, Ohio, and make their way north to Alberta and Frankfort, Michigan, along the current Ann Arbor and Great Lakes Central trackage. There, rail cars would be loaded onto railroad-owned ferries to cross Lake Michigan, bypassing Chicago's congestion as they made their journey west. As rail traffic waned as a result of the American interstate system and Chicago's increased rail efficiency and affordability, the Ann Arbor Railroad went bankrupt several times under several different owners, including its most prominent operator, the DT&I. Eventually, the Ann Arbor Railroad could not sustain its costly ferry operations and ceased service. The state of Michigan bought the railroad in 1976 to preserve rail service to its local industries, and ferry service ended in 1982. Today's operator of the Ann Arbor, WATCO, owns and operates a variety of short lines throughout the country and has been the railroad's operator since 2013. After dropping off their empties, the crew will switch head ends in preparation for their journey south. Once ready, they'll then proceed down to the southern end of Osmer Yard to pick up the loaded cars and lead them down to Toledo.
Downtown Ann Arbor doesn't see many freight trains these days, especially during the day, as the two freight rail operators in Ann Arbor, Watco and Norfolk Southern, typically run their trains under the veil of darkness. It was quite a treat to catch this loaded beast crawl through the city under the early afternoon sun as it seemingly splits the downtown core in two. On point southbound is a former Illinois, Chicago and Eastern GP40-2, still adorned in its original paint scheme, on lease from Helm Financial. Coincidentally, the ic and paint scheme appears to match the University of Michigan colors, making it very fitting that this locomotive has found its way onto the Ann Arbor Railroad. The present day Ann Arbor Railroad primarily exists to shuttle rail cars between the somewhat isolated former Ann Arbor Main Line that the Great Lakes Central now operates and the major Class 1 railroads such as Norfolk Southern, Canadian National, and CSX. In the 21st century, where consolidation seems to be rampant, it's fascinating that this once singular, self-sufficient railroad has been split into two. Perpendicular to the Ann Arbor Railroad runs the Amtrak Michigan Line. This former bustling Conrail Main Line typically only sees one freight train per day, as the state of Michigan bought the line in 2013 to provide high-speed passenger service after Norfolk Southern was no longer interested in providing adequate track maintenance for passenger trains. Just outside of Dexter, Michigan, we find the weekday local NSB-25 on its way to Jackson with a load of cars, with a single SD-40-2 leading the train long hood forward.
can typically be found making nighttime runs as to not hinder the faster Amtrak trains. However, due to nightly track maintenance on the Michigan line this summer, B-25 has been unusually subjected to daytime runs, making for some rare opportunities to see the local under the afternoon sun. Allen Park, located just outside of Dearborn, is home to some of the last standing Detroit, Toledo, and Ironton Railroad arches that electrified this historically significant main line we find ourselves at today. Back in 1920, Henry Ford saw this line as an opportunity to control the supply chain for his Dearborn-based factories and purchased the DTNI. Under his leadership, this busy portion of the line was double-tracked and electrified, and the railroad flourished becoming one of the most efficient and financially prosperous railroads in the country. Ultimately, the DTNI was instrumental in the success of the Ford Motor Company. Today, under the control of Canadian National, the line is known as the Dearborn Subdivision and exists as a fragment of what it once was. However, the line has never strayed far from its roots and still exists primarily to serve the Ford factories of southeast Michigan. On the siding, we can see rail cars loaded with truck frames waiting to be picked up. Under the former DTNI electrified arches further down the line, we find a southbound Canadian National Auto Parts train on its way back from Henry Ford's auto factories. The ornate concrete arches, which have been out of service since the 1930s, are too costly for the railroad to remove and continue to stand the test of time. To the east of CN's Dearborn Sub, we find ourselves in Wyandotte, where Norfolk Southern's Detroit District and Canadian National's Shoreline Subdivision run parallel from Detroit to Toledo. These two main lines act as the major north-south artery for rail traffic to and from the Motor City. Here we catch a southbound CN General Manifest on the move, with Michigan-made automobiles, steel products, and other commodities bound for destinations across the United States.
Due north, nestled between Wyandotte and Detroit, is the small city of River Rouge. Here, along the shores of the Detroit River, we find some of Detroit's most industrial developments, including U.S. Steel's Great Lakes Works. This massive and somewhat controversial complex produces a variety of steel products primarily for the auto industry and employs its own railroad, the Delray Connecting Railroad. At the Delray Connecting's only publicly accessible crossing, we catch a former Birmingham Southern SW1001 bringing a cut of cars north to U.S. Steel's Sug Island facility. The Delray Connecting exists solely to move materials, including molten steel and specialty built bottle cars, across U.S. Steel's massive complex. Formerly, the railroad also served one of Michigan's last remaining coal-fired power plants, DTE's River Rouge Power Plant, which shut its doors in 2021 as the state transitions towards natural gas and renewable energies. Unfortunately, this would be our only glimpse at the little railroad, as a DTE employee from the decommissioned power plant blocked our cameras and followed us into a public park, violating our First Amendment right to free press. In the heart of Detroit lies the infamous Michigan Central Station. This beautiful station opened to the public in 1913 and was conceived for the Michigan Central Railroad by the same designers of New York's Grand Central Terminal. At its construction, it was the tallest passenger station in the world. In 1988, after many years of declining passenger service thanks to the automobile, the station was practically abandoned and risked demolition. In 2018, the Ford Motor Company bought the historic station and has been revitalizing the building ever since. Just outside of Michigan Central Station is the Michigan Central Railway Tunnel, which acts as the only rail connection between the Detroit metropolitan area and Canada. Today, the tunnel is owned and operated by Canadian Pacific, who exclusively uses it for freight service. On this toasty July afternoon, we watch as a Canadian Pacific General Manifest train enters the historic tunnel on its way to the Canadian city of Windsor, Ontario, seen looming in the background. The Michigan Central Railway Tunnel began construction in 1906 and was completed in 1910, acting as a vital link between Detroit and its Canadian sister Windsor as it traverses under the Detroit River. Construction was accomplished by digging trenches in the riverbed and sinking large steel tubes down to the river's depth to form the tunnel. In its heyday, it was a bustling international corridor, shuttling both freight and passenger trains along its double-tracked passage. 
1993, the North Tube was enlarged to accommodate the increasing size of modern rail cars, like these autoracks seen here, practically making the Southern Tube obsolete. Although the tunnel hasn't seen passenger service in decades, Amtrak has expressed interest in revitalizing a Chicago-Detroit-Toronto passenger rail route that would ultimately require the use of the Michigan Central Railway Tunnel and the old Michigan Central Station. Both Canadian Pacific and Ford Motor Company have expressed their support in this venture, with CP allowing Amtrak to use its international trackage and Ford rebuilding several station platforms for passenger service as part of their Michigan Central revitalization. It may not be long now until we see the old tunnel and station return to their former glory. We will conclude our rail journey across southeast Michigan here in Adrian, along the Adrian and Blissfield Railroad's Old Road. On this balmy Monday morning, the crew is fueling up their fleet here at their engine facilities in preparation for the week ahead. The Old Road branch line begins here in Adrian, where the railroad exchanges with Norfolk Southern and runs east towards the village of Blissfield and Riga, where the 20 mile line ends at the Indiana and Ohio Railroad. Today's run east to service the branch's eastern customers will be a light run, consisting only of a single EMD GP9 and a one-man crew. This first-generation EMD diesel engine was originally built for the Central Vermont Railway in 1957, and now operates as one of many vintage GP9s, rostered by the Adrian and Blissfield. This small railroad is perhaps best known for their eclectic roster of beautiful, first-generation diesel locomotives that are actively employed in revenue freight service. Once preparations are complete, the engineer for today's job will align the switches to clear the engine facility and set out on the old road. Before leaving Adrian, the engine must first cross over Norfolk Southern trackage as it waits for the all clear at a red signal. Once NS maintenance of way crews clear their trackage, the old road is given an approach limited signal to cross over the diamond. catch up with the lone engine a few miles east 
as it lumbers towards Blissfield. The Adrian and Blissfield's Old Road is one of the oldest railway lines in the country. Originally built in 1834 by the Erie and Kalamazoo Railroad, the Adrian and Blissfield took over operations in 1991. In addition to the Old Road, the Adrian and Blissfield Railroad operates four other branch lines throughout the state of Michigan. Due to significant supply-related shortages on herbicide products at the time of filming, the Old Road has been unable to tame the rampant weedy outcrop, making for an unforgettable scene as this classic American locomotive seemingly floats along its lush green trackage. As our lone engine proceeds on towards its duties, we will say our goodbyes to the old road, and goodbye to Southeast Michigan. Thank you very much for joining us. Have a pleasant day.